Hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Testing, testing. Testing, testing. A little echo there. Hi. Hello. Hi, everybody. So who's watching? Let us know. We want to see. We want to see. We want to see the comments. <laughs> Let us know. <laughs> we are um, it's Tuesday today. Welcome to our weekly bake along. With I'm I'm Marlene, my favorite Canadian. <laughs> and who are you again? And I'm Hania Panielas. Oh, hi, I Anna, Susan. hi, Karen. Guess what, Karen? I made you inspired me because you were asking about all the gingerbread cookies. So I made the gingerbread cookies today. They're Hello, so Fabiola, good. Brianna, welcome, Ruba, Lee, Hello, Lynn Ann. I almost said Leanne, Lynn Ann. Hey, oh, Fabiola, Mexican connection. Ruba, hi. Anna, hello. Hi, guys. So today we are, I don't know, what are you doing today? I'm doing fall. It, uh, fall, fall Halloween. Halloween. Fall Halloween. So we are kind of, I know we said we we're going to jump into Christmas, but I don't know if you remember on Friday or last week, I really wanted to do a snowman cookie for fall. And so um, I couldn't find my cutter. <laughs> I was quite, I was so upset. And then on, I think it was, uh, when was it? Yesterday or day before I found it. I found it. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be using snowman cookie cutter to make fall cookies. It's really fun. Hello. Hello to Jordan. Hi, Camille. No, she's watching from Jordan. Ruba. Oh, from Jordan. Rina. That's the first time I see that, that uh, location. Rina, hello. What time is in Jordan, I wonder? Hello. Hi, hi, Texas. From all over. All right, show us what you got. Oh, the snowman was hiding. He was hiding in the, the really most peculiar place where I last put it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was uh, hiding on the bottom of the bin among uh, other, like. Was it with other snowmen? Or no, was that's it? the thing. It was not because oh. I have uh, I have several. It was not. It was with I can't remember. It was like with uh, like odd shapes. So so anyway, let's jump right in. So I'm gonna jump in. Also, a reminder: you can always find all the recipes on my blog, Manuelas.com, as well as today's recipe. So look at these beautiful cookies. These are um, gingerbread cutout cookies, and they are really great for decorating. There is a baking powder in these cookies, and I use, instead of molasses, recipe asks for half cup of molasses. In this particular one, I used honey, and they are equally delicious, I have to say. Oh, and would you, is that a gingerbread cookie? Yes, it's a gingerbread cookie. Oh. Yeah, there is ground ginger, cinnamon, cloves. Um, you can also add, if you wanted to make it a little more spicier, maybe white, white, um, uh, white ground pepper, which is really nice. And um, yes, these are really, really lovely. Okay, so let me get started. Yes, it's important to wash your <laughs> wash your hands. Thank you very much. <laughs> always, always. I wash my hands so much; they're so dry. It's eight in Jordan. So uh, oh, so it's close. I'm one p.m. here, so that's not. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, seven p.m. <laughs> I'm like, all right. So let's get started with this. So have yes, you ever? I have, I have done that. It's it's very good. It's very good. Like if you, I, I, if you are not, a lot of people are not strong ginger bread uh, fans because of the robust flavor of molasses so if you want to like tone it down a little bit use you know one to one ratio of honey and molasses and it will give you really nice results i like that word robust well it is it is isn't it like molasses it's robust no it is yeah. i have to say though i like molasses <laughs> I, I i whenever i'm cooking yeah. i like the spoon after yeah. oh really even yeah, like the black strap black strap is like super super strong yeah, I like it. Okay, so good for you. It's apparently yeah. good for pregnant women. 
Uh, I'm not pregnant. No, I'm not suggesting you are. You silly. But um, okay, let me just adjust this so I can. You know how I struggle with placements. Okay. All right. So hopefully you can oh, see that. Very flattering. You cho you chose us. <clears throat> oh, thank you. I do. I honored. So I'm using, uh, this is a yellow marker. I think you can still see here, right? Yeah, we can see. And it's raining here. It hasn't rained in weeks, so I guess, I suppose it's good. I'm sure. I'm sure I like the molasses. Well, you like them in your ginger snaps. Yes. Well, my mother, when I was a kid, would make ribs. And she used molasses. And I would, oh, you yeah. know, you're always looking around what your mom's doing. Yeah, I uh, use molasses when I make uh, pulled pork. Pulled pork. Not that you would eat it. I know you're a vegetarian, but. Well, back in the day, I did eat it. <laughs> I have so many different ideas. I'm like, oh, I'm going to be on a snowman kick for a while because um, I've got so many different ideas in my head. And now the that I found the cutter. The thing is, is most people generally have Christmas cutters. If I had to guess, like somebody who's not a cookier, you know, the collection usually starts with Christmas. And so it's nice to kind of take your Christmas cutters into like other occasions, right? Yes. So the icing I'm using now, it's, um, I colored it with a little bit of ivory food coloring and I add a little bit of pink. So it's like a light skin tone. Oh. I don't know if my husband's heart can take it. I'm sorry? She said she meant if I was sure that I wasn't pregnant and I'm saying, I don't know that Jamie's heart could take, uh, our, you know, our youngest is 17 having a new baby. I think that would be rather traumatic. Well, I look it up. I think it is like good for pregnant women. I made his eyes a bit big, but it's okay. Well, he's a scarecrow. Oh, don't you, you give me what did you do there? Unheard, every I'm here. It okay, everyone. <laughs> it's not what did you guys do there, guys? Definitely not a scarecrow. It's not, it's not. Oh, it's really raining. How now I can hear the drops. June says she likes molasses cake. I have to agree there. Oh, molasses cake, that's nice. I made molasses cake, I made gingerbread cake with um oh, there was molasses with gingerbread popcorn oh, oh interesting very good very 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 good and there was obviously molasses and gingerbread popcorn you guys all like gingerbread cookies some people don't like it i i like all i think i'm pretty much a all cookie fan i'll try them all yeah i know some people don't like the spice in gingerbread cookies Oh, it is for good for anemia as well. I guess it. I guess that that's why it's good for pregnant women. It has lots of iron, I suppose. Kim said it was pouring in Kansas. Oh yeah. Yesterday. June says if it has sugar, she likes it. Um. Yeah. Me. Too. I'm with you. Can you hear the drops? No. Maybe not. No. Okay. Molasses for bread. I think I've never tried that, but I've seen that. Kim's not a fan of oatmeal cookies. I don't mind an oat. I'm not a big fan of the raisin oatmeal, but I'll have an oatmeal cookie every once in a while. Well, I like all cookies. I think oh, I don't really have a cookie. I have never met a cookie I didn't like. No. no well, maybe butterscotch. 
I don't like, but I didn't like butterscotch ice cream. I think that is like that is absolutely true, Brianna. Nothing better than a cookie right out of the oven. Oh yeah, these were really good. I made these yesterday, and also gingerbread cookies. They last for uh, for um, um, for a long time, right? I would say for a bit. All right, so I guess. I uh, I'm going to move on. I'm gonna set this aside, and now I'm gonna make some cute little decorations from wafer paper. Okay, so those of you who are not familiar with wafer paper, you can get it uncolored, plain white. Oh, that's uh. Or you can also get some colored ones. So these are colored ones, and they look really nice. Um, I felt like these are kind of fall colors. I, don't, I, I think they look a bit brighter than they are. So you bought these the colored like that or you colored them? Um, I bought them like that. Can you, you deal with it? I bought them all, uh, in AC Moore. Oh. When they were closing. I think I bought all of them. Oh. I'm the person. You're the I one. All of them. I'm the one. You can hate me if you want, but I did. I do like having these. So what I like to do, um, I'm going to just cut a small strip. Oh, that's a good idea. Cranberry in the oatmeal cookies. I never oh, tried I like that. Cranberry, oh, that's one thing I really miss here. They don't really have fresh, I think they have frozen ones, but but not fresh cranberries. I love fresh cranberries in baked uh, like cookies. I have a really nice recipe on the blog with white chocolate and fresh cranberry cookies, uh, fresh cranberries, and it is so good. Well, she's talking about um, craisins, which are dry. Oh, the, the, okay, the dry ones. Well, those are good too. I prefer fresh ones. All right, so this is a small punch. And I don't know where I got this, guys, but I think this should be easily sourced out on Amazon. Well, I've actually seen those, and recently, at the dollar store. That, that's probably where I got it. So it's like very, you know, it's not very expensive. It's super cheap. And this will work for the for the cutouts. Okay. So the so for both of us, Marlene and I, we have coffee shops. Coffee shop is a place where you guys can purchase templates for various various projects that we've shared, even our recipes or a supply list that include um, PDF with clickable links. And so uh, how it works, so when you make a purchase, you are able to, I think, download it, right? It gives you an, it's an instant download. So then you're able to open the file. And I don't know what Mar does, but I include most, most of the time I include PDF and also JPEG. So JPEG gives you um, an ability to resize the image. So you can, let's say if you're working on a smaller cookie or larger cookie, you can resize it to the size you need. Oh yeah, Canada. <laughs> yes, Canada all the way. All right, so you get the idea, right? So you just, you know, you, you punch these out and you make little little leaves. These are really great for accent, and, and these punches come in different, obviously, different shapes. I have hearts, I have flowers. You have some as well, don't you? I have several as well. So if you can't find the this red and all these nice colors she has, you can actually airbrush just white wafer paper. And you yes. do, you build the, don't oversaturate or else it'll start like getting all wrinkly, but do build your layers you know, and then you'll get your nice colors and you can actually make them like more fall leafish. What's really fun, you could actually save this piece and you could actually use this piece as well. Yeah. I think it's really neat. You could use it on a, a, a round cookie or something and just place it on the top. I think it would look really neat. So don't throw it out or it could, it could be a, a belt or of sorts or something like that, okay? I am storing, I am storing them in a small, I mean, I cut these already so they fit in a bag. But you might want to, you know, use a bigger Ziploc bag or something like that. Um, 
And I've had this for a while. So, I mean, the wafer paper did last for a long time, no? What do you think? There's nothing in it, I would imagine. That's I've had mine for a long time, too. I, I bought mine on Amazon. I got like 100 sheets for $10 or something. Yeah. And uh, I've never seen the colored one. No, I have never seen uh, color. I also bought white ones recently. I had them. And I was going to do what you uh, suggested. But then I was like, you know what? I have the colored ones. Let's see if it works. Yeah, and absolutely. And um, it's really nice. Mm -hmm. These are not big sheets, I have to say. They are um, they are small sheets. They are, this is the size. See, this is the size. And I also have some cutouts here that I made for something else. All right, so now I've got my cutouts. I can set this aside and um, hopefully this is crusted enough so we can look at it. What does it taste like? Well, uh, it's not vanilla. I feel like it tastes not, 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 not like much, but there is like a little flavorish. So I'm going to ask you a candy. It's a candy that looked like a little spaceship and you'd shake it inside. There was like sprinkles inside. I don't know if you remember eating that as a child, if you ever had it. It was like literally like a little spaceship. And that's basically wafer paper. That's what that candy is. So if you've ever had that, Kim, that's basically what it is. It kind of melts on your, like when you put it on your tongue, it, it melts. It, yeah. will, it will stick a little. I, I mean, they're, they're not terrible. It, I think no, it's, 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 it's nothing essential. The thing that I like about using them on cookies is that they're very soft. So yeah. you're not hurting your teeth. I've never yeah. seen that, Joanne, that you use coffee to uh, revive your raisins. Coffee? So to make the straw, yes, it is going to be a scarecrow. So that's I like use... a belt piping tip. I'm sorry? That's like a little bit, like a belt, I call that one. It's like a comes. It's actually, a, it is a 101, 10S. It's the small, the small pedal tip, 10S, but it works for this. I don't have the one you have. Um, you are talking about the little flat one, right? Yeah. So this works as well. It's fine. And you can use, what do you know the size that you have? I don't remember. So now I'm just going to clean up this edge because I'm going to put icing right on it. So using um this is a tool we all love this is a two-in-one tool scribed uh, with a scribe end and then also a little spatula here okay now i'm going to do with yellow and red i'm going to start hmm? don't mind me i just am looking for a picture of that candy to show oh okay yeah go ahead so I'm using for these sections, use icing that is a bit thicker, like 20 consistency or so. Now, if you don't have time, Karen, easily, yes. Karen saying it's a 31R. 31R, oh, the piping tip. Well, the one I used was 101S, but uh, the Marlin was mentioning a completely flat one. It's like a mini basket weave, right? Like for the ribbon. But yours does the job. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to buy everything. Yeah, I don't have that one. Now I'm going to use some red icing. So here's that candy, just to show you guys if you've ever oh, seen. Oh, okay. It's like a little UFO. Yeah. And so that's wafer paper, and then they fill them with like little sprinkles. I didn't know it had sprinkles, sprinkles in it. I would, I've seen it. I've seen it somewhere. Well, you know what? I'm looking at your scarecrow, and if you change the head just a slight, this could be Woody from Toy Story. Oh, it could be a Woody from Toy Story. I mean, I'm telling you, Snowman, it's a new candy corn. <laughs> <laughs> she got it at Hobby Lobby, Karen. This is a cutter from Anne Clark. 
but um, if you have a different, uh, you know, cutter that is similar shape, I mean, snowman cutters are usually pretty much, this, I mean, same, right? Oh yeah, I like the woody idea. Oh, oh did I, okay, oops. And again, reminder, today I'm using gingerbread cookies, but you can definitely um, use sugar cookies or any other cookies to make this design. My recipe is listed on a blog. And you can find it by uh, looking up gingerbread men cookies. And it's a great recipe for eating. You don't have to decorate at all. Um, or you can decorate with royal icing, or you could also just dip them in chocolate you could also include mini chocolate chips in the dough, and it's super delicious. Look, his outfit is exactly the same. There he is. Look on the screen. <laughs> Hi, Woody. <laughs> Tom Hanks would be Look, it's exactly the same. <laughs> well, it's a total coincidence, I have to say. <laughs> so we could say this is a Woody dressed as a snowman. Right? All right, so let me start on the head. So for the head, I'm going to be using dark brown. Okay, and I'm going to do head in two, two steps. I mean, all I need to make is a sheriff star, right? And the, the best with the... Well, you could do that, like, you know, you did your 50 strawberry series, you could make 50 snowmen. Okay, guys, if you have a, please uh, let me know what else do you see on a snowman? Because 50, it's, uh, it's, I might be overreaching 50. What else can we do? Turn it upside down. All right, so I'm also going to include a wall in his outfit. <laughs> 50 snowballs. It would be easier to make. Oh, yes. Julie's saying um, uh, upside down a hot air balloon. That would be cute. Oh, yeah. Okay, guys. I I do encourage this, so please. <laughs> so what, what else do you see? Hello, Sally. Hi, Sally. What else could it be? Onions in a, in a, like a penny house? <laughs> a fairy. A fairy. Oh, a fairy with the wings, fairy? Magical fairy? So well, anything is possible, I suppose. Let me see if this is crusted. Just going to I'm gonna poke it a little. It's not there yet, so I'm gonna I think the head should be fine. Not quite there. So let me start on these. I might. I don't know if I'll use these. Should I use uh, these tiny little? Do you yeah, want me to? So I'll just make. Lori's saying a stack of pumpkins or a topiary. Yes. Yes, that's a good idea. Yes, I was looking at that too. Oh, I'm also thinking wood, um, wood um, what are they called? Wood, wood slices? Uh, um, is it called wood slice? Like, a, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. No, I don't. With the bark. Yeah. Actually of them. Uh, well, uh, what cookie design is that? Um, Lumberjack, uh, <laughs> um, what about a cactus? A cactus might work. Oh, cactus might work. Okay, can you can you write those down for me? Stack of citrus fruits. 
with the leaves on the head. Excellent. I'm, I'm going to have to go with it, I guess. Okay, what am I doing? Okay, I'm getting sidetracked here. Okay, so we're going to do cute little pumpkin, um, um, sunflowers. Well, this is crusting. Just a couple, just so we have something to... Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of icing on here. These have to be quite small. Okay, so I'm not going to make them very big, very, very tiny. And I'm using, um, oh, this is like a yellow with a touch of orange. And I cut it on a V-shape to make a little leaf tip. Yeah, Sandown and Snowman would be good. That I could do. I also did watermelon on, on a snowman cookie. Oh, Julie, that's a good idea. Oh, we already have all, already like 10 or so. So this may be my challenge. See, I'm making the petals, the leaves super tiny. Like so, and I, these will take no time to dry, okay? So I'm gonna make one more and then we should be ready to go continue with the scarecrow. Oh, teacups. Hmm. Oh, what about clock? Like a watch or something. Do you see that? Mar, you don't you don't say anything. What do you see? Uh, I'm not uh, particularly inspired by this shape. It's not feeding my uh, brain. Uh, and and uh, usually when I come up with my ideas, whatever, my brain, how it's, uh, I have to be falling asleep. Kind of like just as I'm falling asleep type you thing. You need to be in the level of what's that, alpha or something? <laughs> I don't know, but that my brain doesn't just pop things out on command. Yeah, but how oh, do yeah. you then remember when you are falling asleep? A gourd. That's a good one. A gourd would, would be beautiful. I think that would be absolutely gorgeous. And then also um, an eggplant. Eggplant. Or a vegetable friend. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, the eggplant uh, could work for, uh, you know, like the trendy valent for Valentine's. <laughs> Okay, why don't you do the eggplant? Then I will leave it to you, honey. You're more than welcome. Cogsworth from Beauty and the Beast. Oh, that would work too. I mean, okay, you guys are amazing. Oh, a charcuterie board. Oh, beets. Oh. I love pizza cookie. I, oh my goodness, imagine. Okay, who likes pizza or who? I know, I know. This could be a cookie monster. Two of these could be cookies. His head is blue, right? From Elmo. I, mean, I, I don't know, the head, we could figure something out. All right, so that's for tiny, tiny little sunflowers. This guy here is crafting. She's asking for flips for her snowman shape. She's so I'm asking for some, I might be going for another uh, 30 plus designs with one cutter and snowman. It just, I don't know, kind of seems like a good idea. So you guys are amazing. Stack of ghosts, that would work. Anything for Christmas? Uh, except the snow, I mean, for like, I know somebody said ornaments, that would be, I think, really good. Oh, who was on mute? I guess we were on mute. Oh, she was putting us on mute. She put us on mute, I think. Oh. Um, the question is, um, she's looking for suggestions to flip that cutter, Camille. Big Bird, oh. You could do a, a Sesame Street series. The snowman cutter. Awesome. Like I said, you could simplify and do the, you don't have to do the sections. 
you can just do the pumpkin part without sectioning it. It will be a lot faster. All right. I'm also going to do a few Santa and reindeer hot air balloon again. Oh, Oscar the Grouch using the garb the hat as the garbage lid. Oh, pretty. That's a good idea. What about Santa holding a turkey, holding a pumpkin? Sounds like a, <laughs> sounds like a tadurk, a tadurkin, tadurkin. You know the the turkey that's stuffed with a chicken and then stuffed with a duck and stuffed with a whatever. No, I don't know what that. Tell me, explain. That's an actual thing that they sell. Like it's called a tadurkin, I think, or tur. Oh, tur really? Somebody I eats. Don't know. Anyway, oh, balls. Yes, that would be good. Beach balls. Let me do a sand on the top. Oh, I like that. Oh, a turd duckin. That's it. Turd oh. duckin. And that is a thing? It's actually a thing, but I mean, when you, I mean, forget that I'm like, it's just, it's a little bit, um, I mean, I, it, I don't know. I find it, I don't know if anybody on here likes this, but I mean, I find it just next it's level. I you like it. At I, I can't, I'm sorry, I, I could never buy it. I can't pronounce it. So, I don't know if they, they debone everything. No, I like because... that. Earth, compass, and books. I guess books could be at the top. How about something with Harry Potter? Can you think of something with Harry oh, Potter? Oh, well, that ball there that I don't know if it would fit on there, that ball that he has, you know? The, you mean the, with the wings? Or something it's called. Again, snitch? Yeah, something like that. Yes, I'm not so too good. Good. I think it's called, oh, snitch or snatch or something like that. Snitch, yeah. the, the, the ball with a little like wing, but not wing, is it wings? Yeah, it's got wings. Yes, all right, so let me finish the hat. So the hat is going to be straight up here, then I'm making a little bend here. A golden snitch. I had said I knew. Golden snitch, huh? Oh. See? Oops. They're doing that with pies inside pies. I saw pies inside cake. Really? Yeah, they put a pie in the cake batter and then baked like the cake around the pie. And then, so when you sliced it, you had like pie inside your cake. It's less bothersome in my mind than slicing a turkey to find a duck, to find a chicken. To find... Oh, this is reminding me of um, Raggedy Ann. Who? You don't know who Raggedy Ann is? Guys, you know who Raggedy Ann is? I always learn something new, please. Can I learn something new? I'm going to put my friend Raggedy Ann up here. Oh, hold on. Is it like a doll? It is a doll. Is it like a... Here. Rag, rag doll? Rag, rag, what is it? Oh, hence the name, Raggedy Ann. Oh, yes. Okay, yes. Oh, that's her name, Raggedy Doll, and or Ra Raggedy Ann. Yeah. You could also make him uh, make him oh, yes. friendlier by adding some color to the cheeks. For that, you could use some dust, like uh, pink dust or red dust, if you want. Okay. This is still pretty wet. I mean, it's still, um, I don't mean what, it's um, it's crusted, and of course there is sugar in my piping bag. This is insane. So she okay. has, um, Raggedy Ann has a brother. Okay. 
So I here, here's the very interesting. Oh, <laughs> what a cutie! <laughs> He's got a matching nose with my uh, sketch. Yep, that's it. Princess in a ball gown. Oh, bowling balls. I don't see a lot of bowling cookies. All right, let me wrap this. And I'm going to take my blue. I know I just did the hat, but we can hopefully work with it. Oh, I got, well, this one is. Oh, June has Raggedy Ann. Do you have Raggedy Ann and Andy? Cutters? Yes, cookie cutters. Oh, yes, Russian uh, dolls. That would fit on that cutter. Russian dolls. You know how much I love Russian dolls. Yes. You mean the nesting dolls? Yeah. yeah things. Now, this is not completely like I would recommend before you do is this crusted. Okay. Once this dries, what I'm also going to do, I'm going to do some stitching here on each oops, on each section with edible marker. I'm going to take my fine edible marker and I'm going to do stitching on the edges here. Okay. And what you could do, you could make a little pocket. Okay, so let's see about the sunflower that we made. Okay, so this is the sunflower. Where do I put it? Here? Well, don't put it on the shirt because it bare. I'll put it on the hat. Put it on the edge of his hat. So, um, well, the head is going to be the, the leaves. Let me just do the leaves first, and then we'll figure out the figure out the, um, um, the hat. I'm going to do this. Oh, this is too running. Where's my figure? Here it is. Hello, Victoria. Welcome. So it's uh, you're 40 minutes in, by the way. What? I'm sorry. All right. So then you just add the leaves at the top here. Okay. And you use a little bit of icing to glue them on. You want to make sure that that section is almost dry so you can uh, so the icing is not absorbed by the by the um, um, wafer paper now no. you go sorry because no. I get dis distracted so um, today I'm I'm going to be prepping for friday because there's a lot of steps i thought i'd uh, instead of like arriving like we do kind of ready i thought i'd give it a shot to do the backwards like get ready with you guys so you can and then friday you'll know what we're working on hold on let me just uh force this coming off so yeah, so we're gonna ice the cookies today. So these cookies are my prototypes. So the ghost I saw, like I was looking at ghosts and you know, if you're a kid and you wanna dress up as a ghost, cause there's like this trend on TikTok where everybody's putting a sheet on their head. Well, what if you don't have a white sheet? So this is basically, if you don't have a white sheet, it makes a ghost with florals on it, which I thought was kind of cute. And then um, the pumpkin here, well, I wanted to do a three-piece set. So the pumpkin's going to be different. I'm actually going to watercolor the pumpkin, but this was my prototype. And I did like it, but it's not included in the set. And then this here is with the parchment paper, wrinkly, but instead of uh, the icing is white and we're going to paint it. So next on Friday, we're going to watercolor and we're going to airbrush. So let's get started. So this I thought also would be great with the chocolate cookie because that cookie it's black. It is. It's that berry cocoa. And you can berry see cocoa. here the chocolate cookie just gives it like a border. The other one's nice. This one's nice, but this gives it a border, you know? So we're just going to um, get a white base on there and we need a white surface because I'm going to be airbrushing on Friday and you need your surface to be dry. So if you're planning on airbrushing on your cookies, so Friday will be airbrushing, uh, you need to have a dry surface if you're resting a stencil on there or else you're going to crack the surface. So you maybe sometimes will think, oh, two hours is plenty and then you rest your stencil on and you crack your cookies, which is incredibly annoying. So you can go 
close to the edge if that's what you like but when you're working with a chocolate cookie if you leave a bit of cookie it really looks like the design is outlined so another great thing about a black cookie or in this case well it's it's not black cocoa it's berry cocoa and it's just a really dark cocoa powder and it tastes amazing smells amazing if you've never tried this cocoa powder um just check it out it's totally worth it if june is still on she'll attest to it it takes your chocolate goodies to the next level so right now my icing is probably a little bit too thick but it's this consistency because of the pumpkin and i didn't want to prep two bags so if your icing is thick like this you just agitate and it smooths it out you see it levels oh karen got the exact ghost cutter at the dollar store yesterday did she oh well, i love it i got it from aliexpress so i did create a supply list which is in the coffee shop coffee shop okay so i'm gonna put a link to the coffee shop so this is the coffee shop so you're cutting it close if you're ordering for Halloween. I think you're right at the at the wire if you want to order AliExpress stuff for Halloween. But if you um, want to check out their Christmas stuff, they've got a ton of new Christmas stuff out, and you'll have it in plenty of time. So Kim is asking if you are airbrushing, what is the minimum time you should allow it to dry? Like I mean, I want to say a good six hours. You know, of course, it depends on if you, you know, your climate and stuff. But and and if you're just like rest, you're not doing spackling like royal icing, a uh, stenciling. You know, you're airbrushing. It's much more forgiving. If you're stenciling with royal icing and you're going to be pressing on the cookie overnight, absolutely overnight. Don't even think about pressing with a spatula. You know, stenciling. You're just going to wreck them. You do have questions about the. The cocoa powder, so is this listed in your supply list in the coffee? The cocoa powder, did I I didn't list it. I, I should edit is it the... In your, is it in your Amazon shop? It is in my Amazon shop. Okay, so this is Marlene's Amazon shop. If you uh, uh, Yes, is this Amazon shop, Montreal Confections Cookie School? Yeah. Okay, excellent. So this is how you can... I'm pretty sure if you type uh, Amazon shop, Montreal Confections Cookie School or something like that in Google search, it will come up. So the other thing, when you plan on airbrushing on a cookie, if I tilt it in the light, do you see there? There's a little, little dimple inside, like kind of inwards. Well, that can create um, a little problem when you're airbrushing because the stencil gets like a little pocket there because it's not able to touch, right? Because of this little in, like in dimple. And so you want to make sure that the surface is completely smooth so that the, the stencil rests completely on all the... Victoria, I totally... I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm totally with you. I have purposely avoided AliExpress because I'm afraid I'll go crazy and add too many things to my car. <laughs> I'm still kind of like... <laughs> oh, I'm still holding back, but she's making it really difficult because she always like, well, oh, I got this, I got this, you know? <laughs> well, they've already started reducing the prices of their Halloween stuff, so. All right, so here now I'm, I'm creating the segments for the pumpkin. I'm working in white because I'm going to watercolor this on Friday. And again, you're adding moisture, water. So if your icing is not completely dry, you're going to kind of potentially damage the surface so you want to let your icing dry and the other great thing is if you've ever watercolored your cookies sometimes especially towards the edge there the watercolor can get absorbed by the sugar cookie and you get like you know dinginess right there well with this chocolate cookie it completely hides it so that's the other kind of added positive of that so i'm just kind of eyeballing how i'd imagine the segments of this pumpkin it's a it's a nice pumpkin cutter so this actual shape is by ann clark i listed a different one that i found on aliexpress that i don't it's actually in the mail i haven't received it yet but it has a leaf which a lot of pumpkin shapes do not have a leaf incorporated in the shape 
And if you get the supply list, you'll see it. And it's quite nice, like to have the ability to make a pretty leaf on, on the, you know, with the pumpkin instead of just having a big orange thing. So once you have your, these two areas done, you can let it like crust over a little bit like hands version, just a different style. And now these have had time to dry. And so I'm just coming in now and filling in the last two uh, segments. And again, you wanna decide how close you wanna get to the edge, but with this great like color, it just adds to the design I find to have a bit of this brown or black, I should say, showing. I kinda wanna eat that cookie. Yeah, the recipe that I, uh, that I use is in my coffee shop. And really like, you can try all kinds of chocolate recipes. The cocoa powder is something else. That's a completely different thing. It's like just you're using different ingredients that will give you a different result. And cocoa powder in chocolate goodies is a huge factor in how chocolatey your thing is gonna taste, right? So I'm just connecting to the first segments there and then just filling it in. And you see why I wanted a bit of a stiffer icing for this particular design, just so that I get a little bit more volume and body so that it doesn't um, lay too flat. So if your icing is very runny, it dries much flatter. Nana is asking, I don't know if you watch Gumball Animation, his girlfriend goes, and exactly, the, I guess, did the ghost and exactly like the cookies you made. Uh, I don't know. Do you, you don't probably watch Gumball Animation. No. That's oh, a coincidence. No, I have no idea what. I just uh, used the cookie cutter. The design is based on the cookie cutter and a stencil that I that I own by Killer Zebra. And so. Sally would um, make them with a little kick. That's a nice idea. Oh, yeah. This one comes. Uh, with a little kick, that sounds really good. So, so now I'm gonna make my leaves a little wrinkled and this is parchment paper. Now, I don't think, have you experimented with wax paper in this technique? I, well, that's how I did, um, I believe that's how I did my uh, concrete. Oh yeah. Well, I don't, I don't personally, um, I use parchment paper because I don't have to worry about it being on one side, you know, like wax paper has only got wax on one side. And so this is, I can use whichever the side. One I'm used to has on both sides. The only thing I would say that what can happen that it doesn't like it's, it can be sometimes hard to get off. Oh yeah. I find maybe that's, that's maybe, maybe that's the only thing that could be. So maybe sometimes hard to get off. So Donna, I'm gonna be using airbrush color and yes, uh, high proof alcohol. I prefer to use the airbrush because it doesn't have, like it's already kind of liquidy and it doesn't have like the gelatin in it. And I just find it, it uh, just works better, I like it. And so I've created a, a little border already. I piped a border before I wanted it to dry. So what happens is if like, I usually don't do a border, I do one consistency, but then you're resting this on and it can cause the icing to spill over. So by having a dry perimeter, it's just holding my outer edge with like, it won't move, you know, because of that. So now you don't want to overfill because you're going to be resting something on top. And so if you press down, it again can cause your icing to spill out. Don't worry about having this heal super well. Again, because we're adding the wrinkly parchment paper, it doesn't matter if the surface is not completely um, smoothed out. So I'm connecting to my perimeter. So Ruba, you can find Marley's recipe in her um, coffee shop. Link is on a screen. That's for the cookie dough. Do you also have your royal icing recipe there? Royal icing, I don't know, but they're also in my cookie school group. If you're in the group um, on Patreon, the recipe, and also it's also on face in the Facebook group. I can smell like I'm decorating, and it just is chocolate 
That's all I smell. Mm -hmm. That's great. So Kim, uh, have you tried writing after doing the concrete method or do you think it would be hard to writing on it? No, I mean, when it's smooth, it's pretty easy to write on it. With yeah. the marker, I suppose you, you mean? I mean, even with edible, with, with edible marker, you can definitely write on it. And with the icing, you can also write on it. As long as it's not too, too, um, the, the surface is not too um, divided, I would say, like, you know, too complex. If it's so I'm going to try to resist. Definitely use a marker. I'm going to try to resist to not lift this paper off until Friday. So now I'm just letting this dry. And so it would dry after six, six I've had, you know, this ideally is overnight, ideally yeah. again, you know, ideally this cookie business is usually a two day uh, endeavor, you know, honestly speaking. And that's why it's nice if you, if you don't have a lot of time, well, you can bake the cookies in advance, freeze them, and you can do like certain steps like this. Once they're done in white, well, you could freeze them. I don't, do not airbrush a cookie and then put it in the freezer because the condensation will mess up your painted surface, but you can freeze them white. Okay, so now we've got our white base color on our pumpkins. We've got our white base color on the ghosts and on the leaves. So now we're gonna prep a few other little things. So I did link some molds on the Ali, from the AliExpress. So you can buy molds on um, Amazon, but the price difference from AliExpress on molds from any other store you could shop at is huge. So if you resist for a lot of things and you want to get silicone molds, I mean the price, di this one here, I think I paid $20 and you'll find very, like this one here, I think was $2. So the price difference is huge. These are old. I've had them for years. These are by Sculpey. They're polymer clay molds. I've never found them again. So, of course, I've been amassing stuff for the last 10 years. There's some things I can't uh, find. Have you? have you really? But I this, think so. <laughs> here, the one I found on AliExpress had a ton of different versions of the bows. And here, let me just show you a quick okay. Kim, you can definitely do that. That would be really cool. Look at how cute the little bow is for the little wreath. You know, like it, it just adds the little fondant touches adds to the to the look. So one of the things I use when I'm making fondant decorations, this is for if you're frying. It's a, a splatter bar. Yes, yes. So it's it, great. Yeah. So when you put your fondant pieces, well, the air gets under and they dry completely like, you know, top and bottom. Because if you make your little fun and things, often you have to flip them over so the underside dries. This way you just put them and they dry both sides. And so I was experimenting with the this here. I had bought this a while ago. I really like, so uh, just, just don't go completely crazy. <laughs> so I just wanna show here this one. I had bought this, I thought it was so pretty, but I hadn't gotten around to using it. So I said, I have to use it on something. And so I'm gonna use it on the pumpkins. We'll see that on Friday, but you see, look at how pretty that is. So I plan on painting that gold. And then the other great fit is this one here on the leaf. Look at how pretty that is at the top of the leaf. Awesome. Perfect fit. So the other thing here, if we look at the ghost, I've got some little, um, oak leaves and a little acorn yeah, and then, saw that. that's so cute and then this is another bow from the um, see it's this oh, one here three bows there yes so you can you know add little details and then this is a stencil i'll, I'll have that ready this is i designed that so i'll have that ready for on friday oh, i think you can also use dan is asking if you can use the modeling chocolate you can absolutely so I'm using actually Wilton. Um, the locally, I haven't been able to find small amounts of white satin ice. So I just, because I don't use a lot of fondant, it ends up drying out and getting wasted. So I, I don't want to have to buy a 10 kilo bucket of fondant. But fondant, if you're making uh, these little decorations, you want your fondant ideally to be uh, on the dry side. So when you get it, it tends to be super fresh and that's great to cover a cake. 
But if you have bits that are like less fresh, I want to say, honestly, that's the thing that works the best for fondant because for decorations like this, because when you pull it out, it doesn't warp. It holds its shape. It doesn't really need cornstarch because it's not overly like so wet. Would you, would you uh, to, to, get, to get it to that stage, would you then maybe uh, take it out and leave it like just a small a amount, bit, though. Just a just, small amount. Yeah, just a small amount. You don't want to dry out your whole amount. This here, it's just, I guess it, it's... Now, this is, you want, to, you want to talk about this? Um, I, I have tried this in the past, and it's a, no. it, it's a so-so situation. Like, it's, it doesn't usually work as nice. I've tried no. it, and it doesn't... Well, the other thing, if you think about it, so let's say I was to squirt royal icing in there. Well, it would dry maybe three, four, maybe, maybe it would need a week to dry. Well, yeah. then it, it takes me one week to make one batch. You know, if it, it's not like, well, it's not realistic. Well, maybe like a pay, like there are different sugar, like, well, never mind, sugar paste. And if you're doing, like if it's about the taste, well, imagine this here, this flower is royal icing. It's not any yummier than a clump of uh, fondant decoration, if we're brutally honest about it, right? Yes. So fondant- yes, You can also add Tylos powder. That's, yes, you can add Tylos yeah. powder to heart. Yeah, it does, does work with marshmallow fondant as well. So you're just pressing it into your mold and you wanna get it, like this here has a lot of little crevices. So you wanna make sure that you're like really pressing it into all the little areas. Now you can wear gloves. This is a demo video for the for the, the glove police that might be watching. Um, you know, that's like a misconception that gloves are cleaner. You can look it up with regards to health safety. They're the restaurant stuff. I've seen store restaurants, the guy's wearing gloves and he's scratching his forehead. You know, gloves are, um, I think a misconception. People think that because they're wearing gloves, their hands are clean. Well, if you just scratched your butt, your hands aren't clean just because you're wearing gloves. So anyway, wash your hands and your problems will be, um, you know, it'll be fine. But some people get very excited about the gloves. So now I've squished it in, gotten all the crevices. And this particular mold is, so this is my cheap one. And it's so buttery. The thing bends oh, super well. It's so nice. And it comes out so nice. And then you want, and this particular uh, design, I want to cut off this for it to fit better on my cookie. So I'm just trimming that off. And then you want to just shape the top, okay? This one here, I, like I said, I paid it $20. Are these, are these heat resistant? Um, I, I don't know. This the one. question, it's about the isomalt, if it would work with isomalt. Oh, this one probably. I don't know about that one. I, I don't know. You know, if you want to test that, you could drop like a little bit on your edge to see if it melts, but I wouldn't like fill it. So this one here, just to show you, like this one is quite hard. I don't know why they made it so thick. It's very difficult to bend this one. Like it's not buttery. It's, I can I compare it to the sole of a shoe. If I had to compare it to something. It's very firm. It's just a different material they use. Yeah. And again, I'm squishing it in. So some people like to color their fondant. You can buy now. It's very common to buy your fondant pre-colored. Well, before I was asking, would you guys ever consider a tutorial for coloring fondant? I rarely use it, but I love being able to work ahead and make embellishments in advance. Okay. You can color. I mean, we. I mean, if well, I color, what I do is I make all my decorations white, and then I airbrush them because let's say you want to make a ton of these bows for whatever reason, well, maybe on one cookie, on one batch, they need to be blue and on one batch, they need to be red. Well, this way I can airbrush them. I have them in stock for whatever my, and then use them, you know, you don't have to, and then you're not left with a bunch of colored clumps of fondant. I always airbrush. So that's the last thing I'm gonna look at today. So next on Friday, I'm gonna be using all these decorations to add my finishing details on my cookies. And then I was coloring my leaves, pulling my hair out, because when you airbrush, the wind blows everything everywhere. Oh, yes. And so what I did is I'm gluing these guys on this piece of uh, acetate. So I'm just adding a little dot of, of icing. And then I'm just placing, so these are actually made before they're dry. 
and I'm just gonna stick them and then I'll be able to airbrush and I won't have to worry about my leaves. So these are quite small, so when you airbrush, the air is coming out and it's blowing them away. Oh, it was so annoying. I was going crazy. They were blowing everywhere. But uh, if you're gonna dust them too, I guess you could do it this way, but you see how pretty they are when they're airbrushed. So these decorations, see the bow, that's airbrushed, the leaves airbrushed, airbrushed. So starting all from white. So you're not adding moisture, your fondant doesn't get all sticky and yucky. Because if you want your decorations to be red like this, let's say I was to need food gel and I need my fondant to be red like this, well, I'm gonna be essentially like holding like the consistency of like- Yeah, you need a lot of the red food coloring in there. Yes, that's yes, and it's not fun. I don't, I don't like, so that's it. So I'm just placing my leaves on here and it'll just make my life that much easier later. Like that. So that's it. So next on Friday, we'll be painting the decorations, airbrushing the decorations, airbrushing the ghosts, airbrushing all the little details that are going to go on the pumpkin and putting everything together. It should go pretty, like if you have all these steps made, so let's say you don't have a lot of time. Like I said, you freeze your white cookies. You can make your fun and decorations, store them. They'll have time to dry even more, and then you'll be able to use them on your cookies. So that's it for today. We're only three minutes over. That's good. Sorry, I took so Everybody. long. I took so long. I took so long? Sorry. <laughs> I'm, looking for here. I'm excited for Friday because I did prototype the ghost, but I'm curious as to how that pumpkin's going to look. I'm going to watercolor the pumpkin with the little uh, gold touch on the side there. I don't know what I'm doing Friday, but I think it might be a snowman. A snowman, <laughs> or uh, or or a uh, um, tombstone that I have made before, and I really really want to get it out, get get it done. That I, you I mean you I, cut and cut? I have, I have a kind of like a vision in my head what I want it to look like. So maybe I'll do that. Perfect. Is it Amber's turn? I don't remember what. No, it's doing. going to be me and you. Okay. So thanks everybody for joining Thank us. You. Again, you can find recipe for the gingerbread cookies on my blog. Just look up gingerbread men recipe and um, you can find all the templates uh, in our coffee shops. Thanks everybody. And we'll see you on Friday. Should be a good one. Okay, bye, bye everybody. Bye. <sighs>